Hi, my name is Pat Tessero. Today, uh, in Simulation in Action, we're going to look at interference fit. How to simulate the effects of interference fit in our, our geometry. In linear static stress, and I'm going to move off to the side here, we can see the interface highlighting where we might define contact options. As this disappears, I'm going to step over here and we'll look at the nine different types of contact that we, we, would, we would find within a linear static stress or static stress with linear material models analysis type. Of these nine different contact options, bonded, welded, free, surface, sliding, separation, edge, we see a couple that are shrink fit. I'm going to push the magic button and now these are going to turn red. These are the two that we're going to look at, why we're orange. <laughs> these are the two we're going to look at today. So shrink fit, sliding, and shrink fit, no sliding are the two options that we're going to look at today. Interference fit can be considered, and I've, I've ordered this in what I think is probably the most popular to the least popular, imported CAD assembly would be a typical place that we're going to consider a shrink fit, but we could also do it for 2D automatically mesh geometry that we make within the interface or even hand created geometry that we make from within the interface. <clears throat> we're going to do a couple examples. The first example is that we're going to look at a 2D automatically mesh geometry first. I'm going to do that because it's more simple. The next example will be importing a CAD assembly. So that will probably be a more typical application. We'll build off the first example. So let me move over here so we can get an idea of what our simple 2D example is going to be. It, essentially a square with a, a, a hole in the middle and then we have some sort of cylindrical object that uh, is in that hole. Uh, we see here in our results that it uh, it has expanded the, uh, the hole to accommodate whatever's inside. And of course, these results are extremely exaggerated so that we could perceive them very easily. The steps that we're going to follow to consider this 2D analysis is that we're going to create the geometry, uh, the 2D geometry uh, periphery. We're going to mesh that geometry, and then we're going to define a contact pair between our outside part and our inside part uh, so that we define this interference. We're going to perform the analysis and look at the results. So why don't we just take a look at that. We have an interface open already and we don't have any parts in the model tree. What I'm going to do is to create a sketch. Keeping in mind that our purpose here is not necessarily to teach anybody about 2D modeling using the simulation interface, but more just to exemplify how to do this uh, shrink fit or interference fit. I'm creating a rectangle, and within that rectangle, I'm going to create a circle. I'm actually going to create another circle, which is an exact duplicate here, but it's attributed to a different part number. I've created my sketch and now I'm going to create a mesh of this model here. I'm going to adjust the display of my interface so that we can see what we're working with. And if I were to zoom in on this, what we would see is that the mesh lines from the red part have common nodes between the mesh lines of the green part. This has to be true 
for this interface where we're going to define our interference fit. <clears throat> so what I need to do is after I make a couple definitions here, which I'm, I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me for my cough. I'm quite ill. I know that you're very concerned about that. I'll try not to distract us from what we're doing today. I hope you all feel sorry for me. So what I'm going to do is hide one of my parts and then I'm going to learn about the surfaces that are going to interfere. And I could see that this surface is number six for part one. And then for the outside, <coughs> it's surface number seven for part two. Now that I know this information, I can define these. I'll select the two surfaces from within the model tree, and then I can right click and go to my contact and then choose shrink fit. And I'm going to first select sliding. I'm going to make a point here, and I'll see that in my lower left hand corner of the model tree, I have a contact pair that has appeared, and I could right click on that contact pair and change its settings. This is where I'm going to define my interference value. And I'll say that I have some interference value, and I'm going to say 0.1 inches. That's very large, but uh, I'm going to make a point here. <clears throat> I'm going to select the surface in the bottom of the model to add a constraint. I'll make that fully fixed. And at this point, I'm ready to run the analysis. What I would expect with this analysis is that my center part, my circular part, is, uh, is going to want to expand, or it's going to react to my outer part, but it, it really is not constrained enough. And we'll see that when we look at our results. So if I look at my displacement, I could see that it's quite a huge number. Unrealistic for uh, this example, but it, it proves a point. This shows a difference between our two interference options. Interference sliding and interference with no sliding. So let's make a change. Let's go back to the FEA editor. We're going to right click on our contact type. and We'll change it to shrink fit no sliding. We'll re rerun our analysis. <coughs> Excuse me. And when we're done, our uh, message is a lot shorter, indicating that the analysis is completed and the results are within reason. And I could look at things like the stress and, and be pleased with what I see there. The, the gap, of course, is exaggerated because when, whenever we're looking at a static stress analysis, these are exaggerated based on the, um, the overall size of the model. If I made it an absolute value, it would make a little bit more sense given my input. <clears throat> Our next, next example, I'm going to step over on this side, we see a pipe, we see a base, we look at the underneath of the base and we can see that it's hollow and this pipe is going to fit into this base. It's an interference fit. The base has a hole that's about two thousandths, actually four thousandths smaller diameter than the, uh, than the pipe. So we want to see what happens, what kind of stresses develop with a model like this. The steps are going to be very similar, but slightly different order whenever we're dealing with the CAD interference model. We're going to import the CAD assembly. We're going to define the interference contact pair. We're going to mesh the geometry. We're going to perform the analysis and view the results. Probably the difference here is uh, the fact that we're, we can define that contact pair before we mesh the geometry. So let's take a look at this model. I've already imported the geometry 
And uh, if I wanted to learn what surfaces I'm, I'm going to uh, match, then what I could do is hide one of my parts and then determine which surfaces are going to interfere. So part two, surface five, part one, surface 20. I'll define my contact, shrink fit sliding. And there'll be an important difference, uh, something that's advantageous when working with CAD geometry now we're going to do this in a couple steps. I'm going to generate the mesh and then we're going to inspect the mesh. What's important is that these nodes between the parts must be uh, aligned with each other. There can't be any gaps between the model. So whenever we look at our meshed model we want to ensure that that has happened. And In this case it didn't. So we take a look at what we can do to make this work a little bit more easily. I'm going to go to the 3D mesh settings, access the options, and then instead of meshing uh, a percentage of the automatic, uh, we can choose an absolute mesh size. An absolute mesh size is going to use the same mesh size for each of the two parts. Once we zoom in, we can see that those mesh lines are lined up so any interference that existed in the CAD geometry actually has been removed. But that information on a per node basis has been stored. So now that when we look at our contact settings, we'll see that uh, automatic is an option. So I choose that and then the, when it performs the analysis, it will use whatever the stored data is. Let's set up our model and run our analysis. I believe these parts are aluminum, so I'll define them as such. I'm going to add some boundary conditions to the nodes within each of these holes. I'll make these nodals, nodal uh, boundary conditions fully fixed and then I'm going to select the top surface of my pipe and make that fixed as well for simplicity purposes. We're ready to run our analysis. Here we see an exaggerated display of our model deflections indicating that there was some interference between there. Thank you for watching this presentation.